How to Improve Your Personality by Ernest Holmes. Did you ever ask yourself, who am I? Or have you looked at yourself in the mirror and said, who are you? If so, you have asked one of the big questions of life. For life can have a meaning to us only in relationship to this thing that we call ourselves. Let's examine ourselves then and see what we really are made of. We shall soon enough discover that there is more to us than a rag and a bone and a hank of hair. For just as you stand before a mirror looking at yourself, something else about you seems to stand apart from your physical body. For instance, you can count your toes and fingers, you can hear your heart beat or feel pain in your body, and still know that you are more than this. For without denying your physical body or its aches and pains, you soon discover that there is something about yourself that in a very definite sense seems to be separate from what you are doing. Your fingers do not really manipulate themselves. Your feet do not really walk of themselves. Because if they could, then you could cut them off and they would keep right on walking. When you say then, who or what am I? You know at once that there is more to yourself than there seems to be. You know that to your physical body and to your environment, you must add something else. And let's call it consciousness, or the ability to know that you are you. Consciousness, or this ability to know, is the most important thing in your life. And you did not create your consciousness. It came with you when you entered this world. Consciousness, or that thing which you really are, is the gift of life. It is God's beloved Son in you. But you may ask, what has all this got to do with my personality? You may say, what I want is a dynamic personality. I want to be somebody. I want lovableness and charm, and I want to be creative. Well, of course you do. It wouldn't be natural for you to feel any other way. But what is this thing that you call myself, and this thing that your friends call you, the person that you really are, this thing that makes you different from all others, and that endears you to other people? Walt Whitman said, there is more to a man than is contained between his head and his bootstraps. And Jesus the beautiful and wise said, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. It is this hidden source of your being that you are looking for, this high gift of heaven, this thing in you that can mold and make your personality. This is your treasure of life. This is the source of your inspiration. There are hidden powers, undeveloped resources, unimaginable depths to your being, which you can penetrate and bring to the surface and make your personality anything that you wish it to be. But first, you must come to know what you really are and who you really are, for you are God's good man, and you alone can decide whether or not your personality shall be happy and whole and dynamic and creative, attractive or repulsive. You alone hold the golden key to the larger life, and you hold it in your hand right now. But you cannot use this key until you first connect yourself up with that something bigger than you are. This doesn't mean that you are going to get lost or become submerged in a dream or a fantasy. It really means that you are going to learn to live and think and act from the feeling that there is a limitless power back of everything you do a power for good that you can use. Somewhere in you is the same imagination that wrote every book that was ever written, the same inventive genius that invented everything that makes modern life comfortable, the great artist who painted all the pictures and the one who wrote all the songs. But you may ask, 
How am I going to bring all this out? How am I going to get it to the surface? How am I going to become that wonderful dynamic personality which everyone would like to be? Well, perhaps the best way to begin is not to try to be so wonderful or so dynamic. Don't strain. Don't wear a mask. Don't try to be anyone but just yourself. All imitation is suicide. You are you, and you are real. And the coming to know the real you is not so much something you develop or create or compel as it is something that you discover within yourself. For this real you is already there. You didn't even create it. Your first step then is as simple as this. Hook your personality, your physical body, your environment and everything you do, say and think up with that thing that you really are, an individual living in pure spirit here and now. God did not make a mistake when he created you. When he implanted his own being in your life and breathed into you the breath of life itself, and he made you to be happy and whole, complete and contented, you may start then by believing that at the center of your being there is a real person, a lovable person, a creative person. This should not be done with conceit or arrogance, but with the utmost simplicity. You must become acquainted with yourself. You must come to know that the real you is lovable and kind, happy and whole. And of course, you can't do this unless you believe the same thing about everyone else. Now this is going to contradict a lot of experience, and so does every great discovery, so does every advance in science. Whoever thought that nylon stockings could be made out of coal and water and air, or whatever else goes into them? Who thought that out of these natural resources this marvelous nylon thread could be spun that goes into so much industry? You may be certain that whoever thought of it contradicted everything that ha had ever gone before. You may be sure that before ever it was formed, somebody's imagination conceived its possibility. And you may be certain that the inventor who conceived this possibility was listening to something in the universe and hearing it and following its direction. You will soon discover that thoughts of love drawn from your innermost self, will make you a lovable personality. You may be sure that the image of yourself in the mirror is a projection of your own thoughts. All that it is, or has, or does, all the power it possesses, you give to it, and what it lacks, you withdraw from it. You may be certain that if you become calm and poised inside, Everything you do will be orderly, that if you love others, they will come to love you, that if you identify yourself with success, you will become successful, and you may be certain that if you find peace in your own soul, you will be bringing peace from heaven to your environment. And could you ask for more? Could you expect anything better? Could even God, in his infinite love and wisdom, have done more for you. I don't think so. The most wonderful thing about it all is that you really do not have to create this uh, terrific personality people like to talk so much about. You don't have to influence people as one so often thinks he must. All you have to do is to live from within yourself, to express that something which you did not create and which you cannot destroy, something which you can and should use. We are all cradled in the infinite. We are all offspring of the Most High, and there is in all of us a deep yearning, a great need for a sense of security and peace. And there is also in all of us, in you and me, in everyone who ever lived, a feeling that there is an answer to all the demands we make on life. As surely as I believe that you live, 
so surely I believe that there is a depth and a meaning to your nature which neither you nor I nor anyone else has ever fathomed, an inexhaustible resource, a perennial fountain of life, and a person that surpasses in grandeur, in beauty and in love, anything that you have ever dreamed about. And I believe that God is an actual presence within and around us, and in and around everyone. We should affirm daily that our family is the household of God, that each member is rooted deep in the one divine spirit of love, of harmony, that each desires the good of the other. Here is tolerance, understanding, and peace. Here is unity of thought and purpose and plan and action. Here is sympathy and understanding. And here is the joy of living and the happiness of being together. Feeling of comfort and well-being. There is a feeling that we all belong to each other and that we all belong to life itself. That we are in partnership with life and with each other, joined together in mutual confidence. This family life represents the divine presence of God in each person, uniting all with the others, joined together in love. There is always a sense of peace, of protection and happiness, for this is God's good family right here on earth. We live because life lives in us. We move because there is a universal energy activating us. We exist because the Spirit has seen fit to give us life. Therefore say to yourself, knowing that I am one with God and recognizing that all people live and move and have their being in that one Spirit which is God, I know that I am one with every person I meet. Knowing that love must be at the root of all reality, I feel a deep affection for everyone I meet forgiving myself for all the mistakes I have ever made and forgiving all others. I seem to meet people in the simplicity of faith, in the harmony of peace and the joy of living. And I sincerely believe that there is a divine presence and a law of good which attracts every person and every good thing to me, and which flowing through me reaches out to everything in my life with love, with confidence with consideration, in joy and gladness, and I am learning to salute God in everyone. I meet people naturally, spontaneously, and happily. It is my desire that everyone I meet shall be blessed, shall feel the warmth and color and friendship which I have for the whole world. I rest in this blessed assurance that we are all one in God right now.